You are young, you are beautiful, and you want an intellectual challenge? Hello, community! Now, you know how to use Llama 3, and you have seen my post how I show you how to fine-tune Llama 3 on Hugging Face Auto Train without any code at all. And now you say, what I do here for the afternoon? What do you think we develop here? A complete new language model architecture. And we have a clear goal. It should have a linear complexity, so it's not transformer-based. It has a similar performance to the self-attention transformer, but different. It will incorporate the latest insight here from the state space models, especially here some symmetry mathematical configurations of S4. And of course, it should outperform the latest transformer model regarding two keys, low latency and throughput. And if I say throughput, I mean about 6,000 tokens per second. So this is really something interesting, don't you think so? And we will use some different elements. But what do you think? We, we built a Frankenstein monster. So we have here the ring attention that we know for 1 million context length. We have infinity attention, also about 1 million context length, with a new memory idea. And then we have the transformer fam with the feedback attention mechanism here in the loop. And now we need a new element to combine all of this. So let's start at the very beginning from our green grasshoppers. You know, we have to reduce the quadratic complexity of a transformer that has a self-attention mechanism to a local attention mechanism for a simplified mathematical operation. Now, you know self-attention, of course, query, key and value computation, how you compute here the attention scores and the weighted sum of values. And you know the local attention mechanism. And you remember, this restricts here our attention process to a subset of input features that are in the proximity or in the local window of a current token element that is processed. So this reduces significant the computational complexity. And yes, we have a window definition. We know how to calculate here the attention score, the weighted sum within a window, and we know a sliding window. And you guess where we are going? Yes, absolutely. Here are the key differences from a green grasshoppers. Now, if you want to know where this comes from, I was not absolutely precise, because as you can see here in this preprint from 2020, it was the long former, the long document transformer that brought us here the local windowed attention. So please, I have to be precise here. And if you compare this here in A with the full quadratic attention that we have to calculate here in the self-attention pattern, if we now have a window or even a sliding window or there's even the idea that we dilute here the window sliding to extend it a little bit further. This is all nice because now we have a fixed size window attention. So we have reduced memory, but we're missing something. And in the study that I found here that the windows and the dilated attention, they are not flexible, not powerful enough to learn here really the task specific representation. So they already decided in 2020 that they had to add global attention but careful, just on a few pre-selected input locations. And you see this here, just on some locations, they did here the complete matrix. And of course, it has to be symmetric to be fast calculable. But you see here, here we have a sliding window attention with a global attention, just at a few tokens at custom locations. And yes, you guessed that their beauty is how to find those very specific locations for an optimization of the local attention mechanisms. But you know what we achieve? A memory reduction. This is exactly what we're going for. So, and you might say, but wait a minute, when I was back in school in the very old days, we learned about a linear complexity with a low memory footprint and they called it recurrent neural networks. Well, you are brilliant. And for my green grasshoppers who've never heard this, here's a short summary. Recurrent neural networks designed to use their internal state, their memory, to process sequences of inputs. And if you look at the basic operation, so each element of a sequence is fed into the recurrent neural network one at a time, and each time step, the RNN performs a computation based on the current element 
and a previous state, which contains the information derived from earlier in the sequence. The computation involves, of course, nonlinear activations like tangent hyperbolicals or sigmoid functions to help the network learn. And it has a simple mathematical equation. You say, I know this. This is great, and you know the challenges. You know we had a problem at this time with the vanishing gradient problem or the exploding gradient. So we had to come up in the very good old times with solutions. And you remember we went here to the long short-term memory derivation of a recurrent neural network and we had three different gates, an input gate, an output gate and a forget gate structure and this was a lot of fun to learn this. And then we had a simplification of the LSTM architecture here with the gated recurrent unit structure. And this is just to remember. Now, what was really interesting here, the gated recurrent unit mechanism has exactly the clue that we need for our further development. So if you are green grasshoppers, I have here for you the kind of mechanisms from the update, the gate, to reset the gate, the candidate hidden state and the final hidden state. So you remember immediately the mathematical formulas we are working with. Beautiful. So now what happened? Exactly a year ago, Google DeepMind said, hey, we resurrect now those old recurring neural networks for long sequences. And you know what? They had the idea. We have now an insight into the deep state space models here. At the S4 model, the S5 model, and later came the S6, the MAMA models. And they said, hey, what can we learn from them and implement it now, maybe, in the recurrent neural network? So we kind of put a warp drive on our old model. And this was interesting because you remember, for example, the S4 model, they were very efficient on long sequences. Therefore, memory requirement and throughput. And if you do not know those models, I have a complete playlist about Mamba, the S6 model, for example, or how you use a Mamba LLM for personalized medicine, how we fine tune it, how we DPO align it with the code, everything for you. But you know what's interesting here on the left side? S4 S4 is parameterized at the discretization of a latent continuous time system of differential equations. And yes, you get the idea. But it also uses specific initializations of the state matrices motivated from the theory of polynomial projection. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, maybe we can use this idea. Can we move this over to the recurrent neural network? I'm so glad you asked because, look, Google found that you can update your recurrent neural network if you add four specific techniques. Linear recurrences, complex diagonal recurrent matrices, an exponential parameterization, and a beautiful new normalization technique. This is in short. If you're interested here a little bit more in detail, this is here our friend, our linear recurrent unit that I told you. And it has this particular form with this particular parametrization and this very selected normalization. And yes, you guessed it. This is the result of a long work to find here a working configuration. If you put it here, yeah, of course, we have a number of layers. Here we have here the pre-layer normalization. And then we have here our famous skip connection and an end. And then, of course, we have here the multiple layer perceptron and 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 you know all of this but let's look now let's focus here on the inside because we will use this linear recurrent unit as a base point to further develop the system so here we go at first i told you linear recurrences you remember when replacing here the state space model layers in a deep architecture with some RNN layers using here the tangent hyperbolicals or some other activation functions, the performance here dropped massively. Now Google found something surprisingly that they noticed that by trying and trying and experimenting, by removing the non-linearities in the recurrence here of our RNN, this gave the system a substantial boost in test accuracy. And you might say, wow, how is this possible? 
And they said, okay, if this is the case, so let's stack here our linear RNN layers and the non-linear MLP blocks together. And they found this can indeed model here the complex non-linear sequence to sequence maps without the need for non-linearities in the recurrence. So this was kind of a breakthrough, this insight. So while dropping here the non-linearities, didn't seem here to harm here the performance of the system, but it has several beautiful adva advantages that we are looking for. At first, of course, here, we have here the ability to control the gradients, either the vanishing or the exploding gradient, and we open up here the parallelization of the training mechanism. So this is beautiful, and yes, you guessed it, we will use here, of course, massive parallelization, as I've showed you in my last three videos. So you see, linear recurrences here, the big L was the first step. The second was here to this dense linear RNN layers can be reparameterized to a complex diagonal form. And you know, whenever we have something in mathematics, then we can bring in a complex diagonal form. It is easier to complicate. To <laughs> it is easier to compute. Plus, diagonal linear RNN layers can allow for a high parallelization. And you might jump in excitement and say, yes, beautiful, this fits. But now we need here for the parameterization, another, I wouldn't call it a trick, but an insight. And Google showed that using here an exponential parameterization, like I've shown you on the chart before, for the diagonal recurrent matrix, this has some benefits in calculating this. And if you are into mathematics, you can find out there is something connected to an eigenvalue distribution of the recurrent layer at the initialization. But this would be a little bit too much. Let's just say they found it and we will use it. And the last point, of course, is the normalization. And they showed that the normalization of the hidden layer activations on the forward pass here was important when learning new tasks for the very long range dependencies. So you see the insight into the S4, S5 and S6 model brought completely new ideas to the old fashioned RNN. And now we have updated our old RNN to a beautiful linear recurrent unit. Great. So what have we achieved? We have a new RNN block here, a linear recurrent unit, which incorporates, again, the linear recurrences, the complex diagonal matrices for faster computation, an exponential parameterization, and a beautiful normalization to, for exactly for addressing here the challenges of the long sequence calculation that we need in a linear complexity. So, shift, modify it on and beautiful. And now the question was, can this new architecture rival here the performance of the transformer and our SSMs, like for example, a six member? Is it good enough? Does it have all the elements that we need to surpass transformer? And especially, you know, we are looking for low latency and high throughput for long context, so up to 1 million context length, because 8K context length is nothing. Here we go again and have some test accuracy on the, on the different parameter, but I don't want to dive into this. But here we have this beautiful linear recurrent unit now, and it was done by Google. What a coincidence. Now you might ask, how complicated is it to code this? And look, it's 55 lines of code for the complete linear recurrent unit. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, of course it is in JAX, because I told you we have an extreme parallelization methodology that we're gonna apply for, but this is it, 55 lines of code. And now you know what is behind those code sequences, because you understood the idea. Isn't that great? Next step, we jump forward a year. The beginning of March, 2024. Google DeepMind comes out and says, hey, I have a new architecture in mind and I call it Griffin. And at the time, Griffin matched here the performance of Llama 2, also being trained on over six times fewer tokens. And this was interesting. And they did Griffin up to 14 billion parameter models, but 
what we are interesting in is what was here the secret ingredients? What did Google to have here such a good performance? Now, as you know, here in a residual block, we focus now here on the temporal mixing block because this is exactly what we're going to use and what we're going to tune. Now, in the original paper, Google said here we consider three temporal mixing blocks. At first, we have the classical global multi-query attention. Then we have, as I showed you here, the local, the sliding window attention, multi-query attention. Or, and they developed something completely new. And yes, you have spotted it. We have here our linear recurrent unit, but they modified it further. They tuned it further for higher performance, for higher throughput. And yes, it is fascinating. And I know that you want to know what is this. So let's have a look. It's called a real gated linear recurrent unit. And I know you're going to enjoy this because this is now a special component here in the recurrent neural network architecture designed to efficiently process the sequences with the long range dependencies that we need for 1 million token length. It combines now the elements of the linear recurrence with some gating mechanisms. And you know the gating mechanisms from our old LSTMs. And this gating mechanism now is managing the information flow across the time steps, improving here the performance and the stability. And you might say, how is this supposed to work? Well, I'm so glad you asked because they have different elements. The first object we're going to look at is a linear recurrence core element. This is a fundamental operation within the unit for our linear transformation of the input plus the previous state to produce here a new state. So we have a simple equation here. This can be expressed in this beautiful thing where, yes, the hidden state. Then we have the gating mechanism. And you remember the gating mechanisms from our gated recurrent unit. But now we update the whole thing a little bit. So let's have a look. We have two gates. We have an update gate and a reset gate. This is the idea. The update gate here in our RGLRU determines how much of the past information, so from the previous state of the system, needs to be carried forward to the next state. Yes, you can think about it kind of a memory module, of course. And it helps here the unit to capture here the long range dependencies effectively. And this gate Google found here uses a sigmoid function to scale here the values in a, yeah, between zero and one. And this is determining the proportion of the past information to keep. And this is a simple mathematical formula. And then we have the reset gate. Now this gate decides how much of this past information to forget, because we have a lot of new information coming in. So we have to forget some part of this information, which helps in the making of the model more robust to irrelevant or noisy data in the sequence. So what is the most important? And you remember in self-attention, we have our self-attention, of course, with different methodologies. But how we do this with a gate, and this is interesting. And of course, Google found here the perfect formula for this. And then we have our candidate state and our state update, the final state. Candidate state is a linear combination of the input and the transformed previous state, modulated now by the reset gate. So it represents the new information to be added to the state if the update gate allows it. And unlike our classical RMNs that might use here tangent superbolicos here, this particular RGLRU maintains the linearity in this transformation, simplifying our computation and retaining here the benefits of the linear dynamics. And the final step is to combine the old state and the candidate state of the system now using now the update gate system, determining now the new state at our time t. So this allows here our beautiful RGLRU to decide dynamically based on the context of the input sequence, whether to preserve the existing state information or update it with new insight. And this, you notice this is exactly in my last three videos what we were talking about, memory elements and all of this. But now it is in a much simpler version. 
So what are the system-wide advantages we have? We have a computational efficiency. We have this beautiful long-term dependency that we baked into our modeling with the gate structure. And we have a beautiful flexibility and a kind of robustness. Okay. So what we have, we have combined, if you want, the linear transformation with some effective sequence modeling through our real value gate structures. Now for my green grasshoppers, I know you say, can I have a simple example? Of course. Now let's say we have here all those elements and the example is a, a diary keeper who records and uses here the past weather information to predict tomorrow's weather, the temperature. So here we go again. You remember we have the core and the update and the reset gate. Now you can read in detail what every gate is doing, how the process is working, how is now the candidate state and how is here the state update. This is this how, in a simplified version of course, how the system works. Now you can imagine, now you have a feeling for this. And now we look at, now that we know the elements, now we look at the complete architecture and it's called Griffin. And you see, now we understand this particular element here. And now we have to bring it all together. So what are the key features of our new architecture? As I showed you, we have the linear recurrences and we have the local attention mechanism. And we found a way, I mean, Google found a way, but we found a way to integrate both now. Integration of recurrences and attention mechanisms. And this is now what gives us here the power. If you want here, look at the architecture of the process of the architecture. Let's go through this step by step. So we have at first, we start with an input. We have an input sequence. A series of tokens representing textual data. That's what we need. Then we have classically the embedding layer, passed to an embedding layer where each token is transformed into a high dimensional vector. Those vectors represent the semantic features of the token in a particular vector space, and you know all of this. And then come now a linear recurrence unit. So each embedded vector is processed now by this unit and it updates here the state based on the current input and the previous state. The purpose here is to carry forward information across different time steps, allowing the model to maintain a memory of what has been processed so far. And you might say, but hey, this is such a simplification to your other three videos. Yes, I know, but simple means sometimes also very fast. So. We have here now the local attention, the local attention window, concurrently with or after the linear recurrence processing, a local attention mechanism just on the window focuses on segments of the input sequence. Yes, we have segments, we have the blocks, if you have seen my other videos. And this window selectively processes now only a certain part of the sequence around a specific token. Normally you have about 2000 token left and right, rather than the complete sequence to determine here the importance or the relevance of the various features within your local window. Then you have the combination node, the output from the linear recurrence unit and the local attention mechanisms that are combined in this node. So we have here the integration of a detailed locally focused information from the attention mechanism together with the broader sequentially updated context from the recurrent unit. The combined information is then passed to the output layer, which generates here the final output of the model. It can be a vector, a sequence of vector, whatever you like. And of course, then we have feedback loop and backpropagation. So you see, it is a simple model. The advantages, of course, efficiency, scalability, flexibility. Great. For my green grasshoppers, this is the summary. So what we have achieved, hopefully, this is just a theory and we have to build it now, is we have a complete new architecture. We use part of the transformers. We use part of the SSM models. And what we want is a low latency and high throughput. Google scaled up Griffin to 14 billion parameter model and explained how to short here the models for some efficient parallel distribution. Of course, everything is done in JAX. But parallel to Griffin, they also developed a much simpler architecture, Hawk. And Google found here that Hawk exceeds here Mamba, our state space models, significantly. 
and it matches here also Griffin here, the Llama 2. And now Google decided, let's build this. And remember, I showed you here in this video, the performance of Llama 3 70B, the instruction fine-tuned model about causal reasoning task and logic. But now compare now Llama 3 to this new model. We have to build it. Let's create a new model. Let's implement what we learned until now. And here, mid of April 2024, Google DeepMind gives us here a beautiful new paper. And they say, hey, we built this. We are moving here past the transform architecture for LLMs for a more efficient, open, large language model. And they call this recurrent LLM or recurrent, and they've chosen one specific LLM, and this is Gamma. Gamma can be down to a 2 billion parameter model. They have this open, the code is free, open language model. We use here the Griffin architecture, and I show you the code. So Griffin, you remember, combines the linear recurrence with the local attention here to achieve some excellent performance on language. We have a fixed side state, it reduces the memory exactly, and it enables some efficient inference on long sequences. And a pre-trained here model with a 2 billion free trainable parameter models end and end. And they finally said, okay, let's have a look. How good is this model? Yes. Google DeepMind, recurrent gamma, you go there, GitHub repo, beautiful. You see here the complete code. You have here all the collapse, everything is here. From the tokenizer, you would go down here to the Jackson function. Yes, everything you know. But of course, that's really interesting. It is just 138 lines of code if you want to see here the complete Griffin model architecture. And it is written in JAX, and you know I have some video on JAX, but give it a try. Try to read 138 lines of code to understand what is going on. Yeah, by the way, they use Palace. This is a internal Google optimization we have no access to. So there are some things Google says, hey, this is just for us. Okay, never mind. But if we compare now the results, and Google has a transformer only Gamma 2B model, and then our brand new recurrent Gamma 2B model, and now this model should be so much faster with higher throughput and long range dependency that you would expect that this recurrent gamma would be significant less performant. But if we look here at all the benchmark, you see it is quite close. It is not super perfect, but average 45 to 44.6, our recurrent has a good performance compared to a pure transformer network. Creative writing, coding tasks, the recurrent gamma 2B, instruction tuned, and they compared here to a Mistral 7B. And the recurrent gamma achieved about a little bit less than 50% win over the Mistral model. So this is not bad. A 2 billion model against a 7 billion model. And now I'm currently setting up here a test against the, of course, the new Llama 3 model, but this is not ready yet. But you see, the idea is that we have a new architecture. And it shows us, hey, this looks good. And now here to the final result. What is the performance of this system? Here you have the tokens per second. Here we are, 6,000 tokens per second. And here in yellow, we have our recurrent LLM, our Gamma 2B model. And look, if we go from the sample length here to 8K, we have here exactly what we are looking for. We have no quadratic dependence here on the context length, because in blue you see the transformer gamma model. And the longer we get here, the less token we have per second. But this is what we achieved. And you remember, we achieved this while here the performance of the system is almost comparable to the transformer performance. So it seems like Google has developed a complete new architecture, taking the best parts from the transformer idea, taking now 
the latest technology from the state space models like Mamba or S4, baking it together into a Frankenstein monster performance, and we get exactly what we are looking for. And 6,000 tokens per second is not bad, I have to tell you, for a 2B system, okay. Now, of course, I'm sure that this is a coincidence that Google stopped giving us the performance here exactly where Llama 370B maxes out here of a context length of 8K. But yeah, coincidences happen. But this, this clearly shows us now the benefit of a brand new model architecture. This recurrent LLM versus Transformer and versus Mamba and State Space models. And I think it's fascinating that with this structure, and it's just the beginning of this development, we can achieve something where our transformer system goes down, goes in its knees in the performance. But this new transformer model stays up. I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. And it would be great to see you in my next video.